Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use flex time in Logic. Flex time is a really useful tool that's used to speed up or slow down audio without actually changing the pitch of it. In a lot of cases, if you were to speed up audio, it would increase the pitch of it, or if you were to slow it down, it would decrease the pitch of it. But by using flex time, the pitch just stays the same. So to actually open up flex time, we go up to this button up here, press this, and then on all of our audio signals and all of our audio channels, little drop down boxes will appear next to them with several settings inside, each of them working in different ways. So the main ones we'll be looking at are monophonic, slicing, rhythmic, and polyphonic. So monophonic works best when it's just one sound going on at once, so a bass line, it's just one note being played at a time, and monophonic works best on that. We have slicing, which works well with lots of sounds going on at once, but it works with non-tonal sounds, so percussion, such as a full drum kit, it works really well with, as well as other percussion. Rhythmic stretches the material, looping the audio between the slices that you create to fill in any gaps. So this is really good for rhythm guitars, keyboards, or any kind of loops that you're using, as when you're using sounds that have more than one note being played at once, it can become quite difficult to retain that sound. So by looping the audio, it helps it retain the original pitch as well. Next, polyphonic. So polyphonic is quite similar to rhythmic in that it's really good on guitars, pianos, and lots of sounds going on at once. It is, however, the most intensive for the processor, so it takes up a lot of power, essentially, but it can result in a higher quality end product. I'm just gonna mention automatic quickly, and this basically lets Logic determine what flex option would be most suitable for your audio. So I think it's actually done it here, it's just selected monophonic for me, because this is a baseline, and I'll just demonstrate how to actually use flex on this baseline. So there's not really anything wrong with this bass line, but there is just one slight spot where you can see the notes starting ever so slightly before the bar. So we wanna shift that onto the bar itself. So if you look closely, you can see these dotted lines going down. The flex times analyzed the audio signal and determined where each of the notes start and highlighted them for us. We can also just create our own slots that we want. So if we just click anywhere on the audio signal, you can see it puts these bars in and also put one in next to the dotted line so that we can then stretch these areas. So we just want this little bit here to start a little bit later, bang on bar 293. So we'll click on this, and we'll just drag it over because we put in our spot and this is where the flex will actually start. We're gonna shift this over so it now starts in time. But as you can see, as I've done that, the audio signal to the left has become stretched to compensate for it being moved over, and the audio signal to the right has been squashed to again compensate for this starting a little bit later. So there is a way around this, especially for our signal on the left. Luckily, there's a pause just before it, so we can just put in another spot here, and then drag this over, and it's going to stretch this pause. And as there's silence there, it won't actually do anything, but our signal will start where we want it to. It will still uh, squash the audio to the right of it, but because it's so such a small amount, it won't really be noticeable. So if we just have a listen to this with the drums, you can hear that bass is coming in bang on time, whereas before it was slightly out. So it just sounds a little bit tighter now. So of course I'm quite lucky in this situation because there's this pause, but if there's not, you still can do something similar where you can create two spots here to drag them and reduce any stretching to as much, well, as little as you can. Next I'm going to demonstrate slicing on here on drumline. So we'll go over and select slicing and it will analyze the audio. And similar sorts of things, we see this bit here it's coming in a little bit late for where we'd like it, so we can click on this, just drag this over, make it sound a bit more in time. So again, very unnoticeable. So there are just two more I want to talk about. So we've got speed effects here, and this kind of negates what I was talking about earlier, is the whole point of using flex time is to eliminate pitch change, making it higher pitch or, or lower pitch, depending on how you're using it. Whereas this does that exactly. So in fact, I'll demonstrate this on the bass. 
So we'll just have a look at the speed. And basically, I'm just going to, we'll just do this. I'm just going to stretch this all the way out, and you'll hear what I mean. So obviously, that sounds ridiculous. That's just an extreme example to show you what I mean. If you stretch something out using speed, it will lower the pitch. But if you shorten it, then it will speed it up as well. It will make a higher pitch. This can be really useful to use on just to create an interesting effect or maybe some backing vocals to make it really low or a bit higher just in the background to add an extra layer but it's worth experimenting with i think it's quite i think it's quite fun to be honest you can get some cool results um bass is probably not the best thing to use it on but you can if you want uh, and then last of all we have our tempophone so the tempophone flex is actually emulating a tape based time stretching device called tempophone uh, and it results with like mechanical sounds that sound quite similar to what will be produced with granular synthesis. And it makes it sound quite grainy. So I'll show you what I mean on the bass here as well. So we'll just stretch this out too, do the same kind of thing. And... You can hear it starting to sound a bit grainy there. We'll just stretch it all the way out. Like that. So, as I said, it sounds quite grainy. And that can be really interesting to use. Again, you can create a layer with that. You can just choose a certain point of your song of a certain instrument, stretch the whole thing out, have a nice underlaying chord sounding all grainy and quite gritty underneath everything. So it's worth experimenting with. Both the tempophone and the speed can yield some interesting results, but they do take some getting used to and some playing around with. Flex is a really, really useful tool, especially once you've come out of the studio and you've realized something's been recorded ever so slightly out of time. It's a quick, easy fix that is actually really unnoticeable and it saves a lot of time and effort that uh, having to go back and re-record an entire song. So I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.